Lisa says, hey, Lisa, big hugs to you. Question, where are the men who are willing to put some effort into the dating process? Where are the men who are willing to put in the effort in the dating process? I love this question, Lisa. So whenever I get the question, where are the good men? Where are the conscious men? Where are the commitment men? I'm, I always say the exact same thing. They're in the exact same place where those exact same type of women are hanging out. They're in the exact same place because the reality is, is whenever you ask where there are, that's such, Lisa, I know you're a sweetheart, so please forgive me what I'm about to say. It's an, it's, it's a question that really makes no point because good people are everywhere. I, I want to invite you. Okay. So let's take this question deeper. How can I meet a man? How can I meet a man? who's aligned to who I am and what I want. I'm going to repeat that. How can I meet a man who's aligned to who I am, what I want? I'd rather that be your question than where are they, okay? How can I meet that person? So it might mean you start going online dating. Roughly about 50% of all new relationships for people over uh, 45 years old is happening through an online connection. So you might want to start with the online dating sites as one place to go. You might start wanting to do the activities you love that you know that they're going to be other men. The problem with this is in today's realm, this organic way of meeting, the real challenges in your midlife is you don't know when you're meeting because everyone's a stranger. You don't know if they're married, they have a girlfriend, they just broke up with someone, they've got issues. So this makes it more difficult and you don't know where they stand. This is why online dating has become so popular. In fact, as I said, roughly 50% of all new relationships are happening through an online connection. So coming back to your question, they're online dating, just like women are online dating. Okay, yes, there are, and, and sadly, only a small percentage of the population is online dating. A significant percentage of the single population isn't even making effort. By the way, as people age, people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, they make almost little or no effort trying to connect because they've given up on the idea of being mated. I repeat that, they've given up the idea of being mated. So this is true of men and women alike. So I'm here to say, instead of asking, where are they? I invite you, Lisa, to go, how can I meet that person? And at the moment, online dating happens to be the number one place where more people are congregating than ever before. And this didn't, by the way, there was a movie called Sleepless with Sleepless in Seattle uh, some years back. I think it was in the 90s with Tom Hanks. And there's a scene where Tom Hanks is talking to a friend and uh, his now wife, Rita Wilson. She's in the scene. And they, the, I think it was uh, the friend said to Rita, it's easier to be killed by a terrorist than it is to find love in your 40s. I mean, I'm sorry. I, that's I'm bastardizing the quote, but it's something along those lines. That was back in the 90s. We, you know, with the invention of this, and by the way, there's a blessing and curse with that comes with the, the technology, is that now we have access to people we wouldn't otherwise have and are coming back to the original conversation. And this is why there's a lack of emotional safety because sadly, we're meeting strangers. I'm sorry, this is the world we live in. So, how do we work around this? By becoming who we want to attract, by becoming who we want to attract. This is why I continually recommend everybody doing personal development, self-help and spiritual work. So you actually are happy because the most important relationship you'll ever have is the relationship with yourself. I repeat that. The most important relationship you'll ever have is the relationship with yourself. So in this particular case, when you're at, you know, it's I'm here to invite everyone. It's not about meeting a guy or a gal. It's about meeting the love of your life that resides within yourself. And that's my invitation for everyone. So Lisa, thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, this will be our last question of the day. It's from Lisa again. Question, if a guy tells you immediately that he had a bad childhood, is that a deal breaker? Great question. So folks, 
here's how I would, so I, I was uh, working with a client of mine. And by the way, if you need some support on this, check out the link to a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. My area of expertise is how to ask better questions in the early state of dating. But I had a client that asked about some uh, man's childhood and he said, and I quote, I had a despicable mother. I had a despicable mother. And I thought, wow, that is really strong language. That is strong language. What she did next was because we've talked about this in my coaching practice, is she asked him, how did, how did you heal from that? How did you heal from that? How did you heal from that? And he didn't have a response because he stuffed it, he buried it. How he healed with it, he hyper-focused on work. He hyper-focused on physical fitness, but he's done almost little or no personal development work to heal. And that most likely had suffered, he suffered a severe trauma to use the words, I had a despicable mother. So when someone tells you they had a bad childhood, the follow-up question is, how did you heal from that? How did you heal from that? And then listen to their response. Sadly, most people haven't done healing. And this is why it takes sometimes decades for men that go through an emotional crisis to heal. And a lot of times they use drugs and alcohol as their healing method instead of actually interpersonal work, introspective work, looking within. So that's my invitation for you on this one. And that was a great question. So thank you so much for that one, Lisa. Really appreciate it. All right. Michael says, if it doesn't look good, yeah, it doesn't look good. Probably not. 